All right, so let's get started on MP2. So what I've done up until this point is I've downloaded the MP2 test suites and I put them in the right spot. And I've also changed my grade.yaml to reflect that I want to start grading MP2. And these are the same steps that you took when you started MP1. So I'm not gonna go over those in the video. Um, now, there's a challenge here right off the bat, which is that as soon as you add the MP2 test suites, your project is not going to compile. Um, so if I try to do anything up here, like if I go to build and, and make a project, um, it's, it's going to fail. Um, and the reason is that there's a dependency between the test suites that we give you and the new things that you need to add to complete MP2. Um, and there are several new files that you're going to have to add to the project in order to complete this checkpoint. We're going to walk you through what you need to do step by step, piece by piece. But when we give you all the test suites at once, what happens is, you know, those test suites require like things to exist that you don't have and the test suites are going to fail. So you won't actually even be able to run the test suites. What I'm going to do in this walkthrough is get us to the point where we can run the test suite. And there's two things we're going to do. Now, nothing's going to work. We're actually not going to pass any tests, but we're going to get to the point where we can make some forward progress because using the test suite is really important for us to be able to make forward progress, right? I mean, this is how we want to do things. We want to work incrementally. We want to work on passing one test and then moving on to the next test. And we set up the test suites for MP2 in a very similar way to MP1, where they're really designed to help you work through the stages of the project. So if you sort of start from top to bottom, uh, it looks like this actually uh, succeeded, but I think the reason it succeeded is because when you run build, it doesn't actually build the test suites. So, uh, but you can see in my MP2 tests, as I'm, as I'm scrolling through this, I have a bunch of these you know, red uh, indicators, right? Uh, because there's no course um, symbol in my project yet, right? Uh, down here, uh, it's looking for course again. Down here, it's looking for a get course method on the client, which we haven't added yet. Um, down here, it's, it's gonna be looking for a course activity, which we haven't added yet. Okay, so um, so let's try, let's go up here, let's try running the MP2 test suites. I'm gonna click this button. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do in a minute is I'm gonna show you how to add a run configuration so that we can rerun these. But when I try to run the MP2 tests, I'm gonna get stopped by all these problems. And again, this is just due to the fact that we haven't started MP2, and so we haven't created some of the classes that the test suites are expecting to find. Okay, so one approach would be we could go through and we could sort of, uh, this is sometimes referred to as, I don't know why I have these on, sorry, I'll take them off. This is sometimes referred to as stubbing out. So we could go through and we could create sort of placeholders for all of these different things. Um, but what I'm gonna suggest that we do instead is we isolate just one test and we get that test to run. Um, and actually that's the first test that we expect you to work on as you start the project. And that's a test that is um, gonna focus on you creating a new model to hold a new piece of information. So one of the things we're doing on MP2 is we're adding a new activity, a new screen to our app that allows us to view detailed information about the course. On MP1, we use the summary model to store just the summary information about each course that was needed for that list view. So that model contained the title and the department and um, the number, and that was all you needed to format things properly so your, uh, the list of courses looked correct. But now we're adding a new screen that's gonna allow us to view a little bit more information about the course, not actually that much more. Um, so we're gonna need a new model. Um, okay, so the, the model that it's looking for actually is, is here. It's called models.course. The other thing I want to emphasize here is that uh, please follow along and make sure that you put things in the right spot. So when we test your code, and some of you have been already encountering this, we don't use your test suites. Um, if we used your test suites, I suspect that some of you might take advantage of that to make them a little bit easier. Um, so what happens when we grade your assignment officially on our remote server is we take your code, we take our test suites, we combine them together, and then we run the grader. And so we always are using our test suites. And so the result is that we have to agree on where things are. And so for example, if you put your course model somewhere else in your project, you could get your local test suites to work by changing them, but when you try to use ours, they're going to fail. So let's put things in the, in the right spot. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through uh, this test suite. Let's see here, there are, um, there are, let's, let's go through these. Oh, yes. So the first uh, test is actually a repeat from MP1. The MP1 test for the summary filter actually had a weakness 
and it wasn't actually um, identifying certain problems. So for many of you, this test will work right away because your filter method already works properly. For some of you whose filter method does not work properly, you will actually have to spend a few minutes to fix this before you can move on. But that's okay. Uh, this one should actually work. Um, my MP1 works fine. And so, you know, this is not gonna cause me a problem. Okay, so the first uh, test suite that we're going to focus on is this uh, test course class uh, test suite. Um, and so what I'm gonna do with the rest of these is I'm actually just going to, to comment them out. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, there's a keyboard shortcut in Android Studio that I can use, if I can remember how to do it. Uh, there it is. Okay, so that just comments out a big chunk of the test suite. And you'll notice that some of the problems went away because some of the problems had to do with uh, the use of uh, the get course method on the client that we haven't added yet. And so essentially what we're gonna do here is we're gonna comment out a big chunk of the test suite. And then as we go forward and we start working on other things together, we'll uncomment these chunks and, uh, and you know, be able to work on them, right? So we'll uncomment them once we're ready to work on them. Until we get there, we're gonna leave them commented out because if we don't, it'll prevent the test suites from building and we won't be able to test anything, okay? So uh, this is a test suite for the uh, server course route. We're gonna add that together, but we're not gonna test that yet. Um, okay, now let's go through these integration tests and, re and remove these as well. Um, so this test, I'm going to, and actually these, I think what I'll do is I'll just remove this entire block because I'm not gonna need this. Now these helper methods I'm gonna leave in, you're gonna see why in a second, but this one I'm just gonna comment down. Okay, uh, now if we go up here to the top, you'll see that there's quite a few unused imports, but that's okay, we're gonna ignore that. Oh, I still, where's course activity? It seems to be still sneaking in somewhere. Oh, I think I know where it is. Uh, where am I using this? Oh, that import I can comment out. So this import, I, I'm just gonna comment out because I haven't created a course activity yet. That's the new activity that we're gonna use to display the more detailed view of the course, okay? So that's fine. Now let's look at the errors that are left in my project. And they all have to do with this course model that I haven't created yet. So now I'm good. I essentially have one problem that I'm gonna fix that's gonna allow my test suite to start being uh, able to be graded. Um, so let me run this uh, again, and we're gonna see that there's still gonna be some compilation errors that we're gonna have to fix, but now they're all the same. It's looking for this course model, and it didn't find one. So let's create that together. So where is it expecting to find it? So if I open up, uh, I'm in the project view. That's where I, I normally uh, work. If you're using the app views, it's gonna look a little different. I'm gonna go into the directory that contains the source code for my app and into that models directory. This is where summary lived. Remember the summary model that we worked with last time. What we need to do is we need to create a new model called course. So let's do that. Uh, I can right click on this and I can hit new Java class and I'll call it course. Hit return and Android Studio does the right thing. Now, okay. This is an important piece of information about how Git works that you need to understand in order to, to complete this MP and to work with Git in general. When you create a new file in your project, you need to add that file to Git, which means you need to tell Git that you want Git to track changes to that file. If you don't do this, what will happen is when you push your code, this file won't be included. So when we grab your code to grade, it won't have your course model in it and bad things will happen at that point. So. What I'm gonna do here, the normal thing, the, the normal thing, the right thing to do is usually to hit add at this point. But let's say that you forget because you know, you're just clicking on random buttons. You know, you're so excited to get started at NV2 that you just click anywhere in order to get the box to go away. So let's click cancel. And then we, when we commit in a few minutes, I'll come back to this and show you what the right thing to do is. Okay, so now I've got my course model. Now, if I go back to the MP2 test suites, you'll see that this error goes away right away because now there is a course model, a course class, in the models directory to import. Um, but I still have some errors down here in these helper methods that are being used by my test suite. And these errors actually start to give me some hints about what this class needs to be able to do. So let's go back to uh, course.java. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna get some errors with javadoc here because of Jack style. I'm just gonna ignore those. Uh, you, can, you can fix those later. 
So if you look, the, the course object actually is expected to store a lot of the same information as the summary object. So this is a, a new, one of the cases, and there aren't actually su a super large number in Java where extension actually makes sense here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my course model extend the summary model. Um, and now if I go over here, you'll see that these are gonna go away. Because I'm extending summary, I have a get year, get semester, get department, get number, and get title. That's great. But I'm still missing this get description method. And that's a hint about this extra piece of information that this model needs to hold. So for now, you know, there actually isn't a huge amount to do here in order to pass this part of the MP, and I don't want to give away the whole store right at once. So instead, what I'll do is I'll just write a get description method here um, that's public, and I'll just return like an empty string. Um, and what this is going to, and this is another check style there, that's okay. But if I go back to the test suites now, you'll see that there is a good description method. Is it going to work properly? No. That's okay. We'll get there. But now let's see if we can actually run the test suites. Because remember, our goal here was actually just to be able to run the test suites at all, right? I want to get the test suites to the point where they can compile, and I can actually run them and start to make forward progress. I don't expect anything to succeed. I just want stuff to fail. Okay, so now I did see that my test summary filter worked. Remember, this is a retest from MP1. If this is broken, please stop and get help so that you pass this test. Um, most of you will pass this test out of the box. So congratulations, you finished MP1 properly. Um, now, what we're going to focus on here is this test course class. So if I want to rerun this again, remember, one of the best ways to work on these projects is one test at a time. Focus on one test get it done, move on. Um, and so I can actually run this test all by itself. So if I hit run test course class, um, it's just gonna run that one test. Um, and now you can start to look at what the problems are and start to make some forward progress here about sorting things out. Okay, but I'm at the point now where, what have we accomplished? So we created this course model. I added the MP2 test suites to my project. I've configured the project to grade using the MP2 uh, let's actually uh, try that. So if I go over here, hit grade. I'm going to hit. Um, I'm going to grade the project. I expect to get uh, 10 points because I think there's some check style problems that I created when I added the course class. Um, but my summary filter method does work properly, so that's nice. Um, so let's look, and this is going to thing for a little bit, and now it says 10 points. Okay, and I see check style had some problems. My test summary filter method passed. That's good. Again, that's an old MP1 test. Um, but the test course class method failed, and that's because I haven't uh, completed that properly. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to do it. So in the next series of videos, what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna go through each of these new parts of the project, and we'll talk about how to complete them. One thing I wanna point out to you is that this checkpoint is very much about mimicry. And this is something that, you know, you might think, oh, you know, you're just teaching me how to copy code that you gave to us. Um, to be honest, a lot of times when you're adding new functionality to an existing project, that's exactly what you're doing. You're not copying the code, but you're copying the approach. You're taking a piece of code and you understand a little bit and then you augment it by writing something very similar to the code that was already there. And we'll talk about how to do that for the model, for the uh, route on the server that provides the information that the model needs, uh, for the client method that calls that route in the app to retrieve the information, and then for the activity that displays everything. So there are four parts to this, right? You build the model to hold the information, you build the support for the server to provide the information, you build the support into the client to retrieve the information, and you build support into the app to display the information. And that really is typically the entire pipeline for any type of UI-based application. Grab information from server, server has to provide it, client has to fetch it, and then I render it somehow so that the user can see it in a useful way. So that's what we're gonna do. Step by step, we'll work on it piece by piece. Before we're done though, I wanna commit my changes. Since my score did increase, you'll see that you know uh, the grader is gonna insist that I commit. Um, and I'm gonna show you what to do about that file. Remember we forgot to add that file? I'll show you what to do about that. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here to my commit dialog. Um, and okay, I'm gonna hit start in MP1. Now, if you look here, you'll see that there's an unversioned file. And this is Git's warning to me. It says, I just wanted you to know there's a file in the repository that is not included in this commit. So again, if, if we didn't fix this and you went to push this, the grader 
on our remote server would crash because it's looking for a file named course.job and you haven't added it to your project yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this. This is going to now add course.java to my commit so that it's included when I push. Okay, so I'll say, um, okay, I'm going to say, let's see, stubbing out mp2 test suites. That's my commit message. Um, I'll commit and push because why not? I might as well make sure that the remote grader is working and, you know, get the 10 points that I've earned uh, for this. So that's going to, yeah, this is okay. Uh, don't worry about this. You can just hit commit and push, go through the, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll fix some of these problems later. Um, okay, so we're off to a good start. Now, one thing I just want to I want to sort of reiterate before uh, I finish up is that um, these changes that you make to the test suites are not reflected when we do official grading. So actually what's going to happen right now, if I went over to the grading page for MP2, I'm going to have a zero because my code doesn't compile because the test suites that we use on the remote server don't have these sections commented out that I just removed. So they're expecting to find a course activity um, file that I haven't created. They're expecting to find a get course method on my client and things like this. So we actually have quite a few things that we need to fix before we can actually get any points in the grader. Um, and so in the series of next videos, I'll show you how to get started on each part of the project. And when we're done, we'll actually be able to have an uncommented test suite. It will fail. Uh, it won't actually be able to um, get, you know, sorry, we won't be passing the tests. The tests will run all of them and I'll be able to push and get some points on the official grader, but I won't get any, I necessarily get any or many points for the actual individual tests, except for that old one from MP1. Um, so that's our next goal. Um, and in a series of videos, we will get there together.